Hello, and welcome back to SIBO Mistakes. This is the series where I talk about the biggest mistakes SIBO sufferers are making and is keeping them stuck. Not only are these things causing relapse after relapse after relapse, but they are keeping you symptomatic. They are keeping you bloated and constipated and dealing with diarrhea, abdominal pain, abdominal distension, pressure, and cramping. If you want to be rid of those symptoms and feel like a normal human being anytime in the near future, this is a very important series for you to pay attention to. Now, the title of this video might have taken you off guard because, wait, there's research on this. Doesn't she know? But I think by the time I get rolling into this point, you're going to see where I'm coming from. So today's mistake is taking partially hydrolyzed guar gum, PHGG, also known as sun fiber. But here's the caveat. There is research that suggests that partially hydrolyzed guar gum is a good prebiotic. It's low FODMAP, it's not fermentable, and it might even help make rifaximin that much more effective for you and help with the eradication of SIBO. I acknowledge that research. The problem I see is that people think that they can take a supplement like guar gum or perhaps something else like acacia, and they can get all of their dietary fiber from one or perhaps two supplements and still stay on a low fiber diet. That can work to a certain point. And if that's the only thing that you could do right now, that is still incredibly valuable. But please don't stop there. There are a lot of people out there who can introduce high FODMAP foods or high fiber foods, and they don't because their practitioner or the internet told them that they have to do this diet to starve the SIBO, even though it doesn't make a lick of difference for them symptomatically. There are a lot of people who do the diet for much longer than they need to because, again, they were told that they need to starve the SIBO or treat the SIBO, even though there is literally zero evidence that these diets starve or treat SIBO at all. So if you're going to use prebiotic fibers like guar gum or acacia or, you know, psyllium, whatever the list may be, do so, but do so in addition to focusing on prebiotic fiber in your diet. Don't be the person who has the world's most narrow diet and thinks that PHGG is going to replace what you get from food. It's a help. It's something, but it's not the same. You see, and part of this goes back to what I've talked about in previous videos in the series. SIBO is not simply a quantity condition. It's not that you have too many bacteria and we just need to get that number down and then everything will be hunky-dory. Instead, there's a quality issue that needs to be taken into account. There's a state of dysbiosis and imbalance between good and bad in that ecosystem. And that is actually much more associated with the symptoms you're dealing with. So we need to ask ourselves, what kind of supplementation and dietary pattern and lifestyle strategy would be an effective way to treat dysbiosis? And the key to this, my friend, is diversity. You see, we get so much more bang for our buck from prebiotics and fibers if we consume small amounts of many different types. That one scoop of partially hydrolyzed guar gum is not going to hold a candle to a, a comparative amount of fiber that you would get from five baby carrots, one apple, and three Brussels sprouts. You're going to get so much more out of that variety, out of that diversity of foods. You're going to feed many different microbes with that diverse fiber-rich diet compared to the single prebiotic that's going to selectively feed only a small handful of bacteria. So again, to be clear, it's not that PHGG is bad. It's not that acacia or psyllium are bad for you. It's just that they cannot and will not take the place of a fiber-rich, diverse diet. So by all means, use those supplements when you need to. I sometimes take PHGG myself, even though I have a diverse diet. But please make an effort and make it a focal point in your treatment plan to get the fiber in your diet and get the diversity back in your diet ASAP. And look, I get it. It is no small feat to build yourself a SIBO-proof body, particularly if you've been suffering for a prolonged period of time, like years or heaven forbid decades. And it's really hard to coach yourself. This is the reason why every doctor on planet Earth goes to a different doctor for their medical care. It is really hard to be totally objective about your situation and your bag of bullshit 
and make good rational decisions from that. A, if you don't have the expertise and the knowledge to do so, but also because all of us, myself included, tend to have blinders on when it comes to certain things. So while I hope that this video series helps people on YouTube and that's all they need to get better, I do offer coaching for those of you who need a little bit more help and a little bit more fine tuning from me. If you didn't know already, I have a group coaching program called FODMAP Freedom in 90 Days, and it is truly unlike anything else you're going to encounter on the internet. Yes, it's a group coaching course, but there's a lot of opportunity for feedback and support and coaching from myself and my nutritionist. And everybody that wants individual attention can get individual attention and time with me and questions asked. If you are wanting a little bit more support in this journey, you want somebody who could be more objective about your situation and give you real actionable advice and make this a digestible experience, pun totally intended, I would encourage you to check out FODMAP Freedom, join the waitlist, and come join our next enrollment. I really think that this is going to make the difference between being SIBO stuck and being SIBO free.